everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is that time of year again where we not only go through our goals for the year and check in with them and see how we're doing, but it is also the time of year when it's really hot outside and I get very sweaty whilst filming and it's very uncomfortable, so I'm just gonna power also, this video is sponsored by Blinkist and I will tell you a bit more about them later. So at the beginning of the year slash end of last year, I made two videos. One was my New Year's resolutions and one was my 2020 career goals. And I wanted to do a check-in to see how <laughs> everything is going because, oh, boy, is 2020 not the year that we all expected it to be. And I think it's a good example of how, even though I really enjoy goal setting and setting New Year's resolutions, and that's a thing that is useful for me, I'm aware that it has to be flexible because you just have no idea what is around the corner and you will have to adapt and change your goals. It might be external factors or it might just be that your priorities have changed. And so that's why I think doing these mid-year check-ins with your goals and resolutions is always a good idea. If you set them in the first place or you could use this point in the year or at any point in the year to make some new goals. Before we dive in, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. My name is Hannah and I make new videos on this channel every week about lifestyle, culture, career and productivity topics. Broad range, but we have a good time here. So I thought I would start with my career goals first and then move on to my resolutions and see how everything is going. And to be honest, I actually haven't properly checked any of these since I set them. That doesn't mean I haven't been working on them because obviously like somewhere in the back of my mind I've been like, oh, this was a goal, but I haven't been rigorously checking in with these goals until now, so let's go. So my first career goal was consistent videos, one video per week on each channel. And I would say I've been doing this pretty well. I've taken the odd week off here and there, but you know, that's understandable. It is an ongoing slog and grind having to put out new videos every single week. And so being able to take a week off here and there is very good for me. But for the most part, I think I've been pretty consistent and I'm very pleased with myself. The second was up the production on the Hannah Whitten channel, new formats, new series, experimenting with content. Mm. Not really. I had lots of plans for like bigger projects, but that required like filming at the YouTube space and hiring a crew, which obviously haven't been able to do. I think I've been doing okay with just filming at home, but the lockdown and everything has definitely made me less motivated to experiment with content. It's just like, okay, this is what I know, this is what is comfortable, this is what is easy, and I don't want to add any extra stress on myself right now. So that's kind of where I'm at with that goal. And I don't want to force creativity because I don't think it's that easy, but I also have been doing some things like experimenting with doodling on Procreate and putting doodles in videos and stuff. Not in every video, but when I feel inspired or when I'm like, oh, that would make a great doodle. I don't know, little bits here and there, but not a lot. My third goal was 600,000 subscribers on the Hannah Whitten channel and 650 was my stretch goal. We hit 600 pretty soon. I think I was just very pessimistic about my channel growing at all. And we're now on 620. And to be honest, I don't know if setting these goals is good for my brain because my channel experienced a lot of growth in 2016 and it's still growing, but it's just not growing at the same rate. And it's very frustrating when I'm like just focusing on the numbers and I'm not there yet, but what I want to focus on more is making good content and trying not to worry so much about the numbers. We'll get there one day, Hannah. We'll get there. But speaking of numbers, I wanted to get the Doing It Instagram account to 10k so we could get that swipe up link and it like literally happened last week. I'm so happy. And we have that swipe up link. And season three of the podcast is out now by the time this video comes out. So we can start swipe up linking to episodes. So thank you so much to everyone who is following us over there and listens to the podcast. Very pleased about hitting that goal. Do I need a new goal? Nah, we, we just keep, keep it above 
10k basically. Also, what I've written here is that apparently at the time of making that goal, the doing it Instagram account was at 5k. So that's an amazing, that um, amount of of growth. Also this year I wanted to get 10k subscribers to my newsletter. I'm not entirely sure what we were at at that time. I've not got it written here, but we are currently at like 8,000, which I'm really, really happy with. If you didn't know, also during lockdown, my monthly newsletter has become weekly. I changed this just because I had a bit more time on my hands and I wanted to use it as an opportunity to experiment to see if I could maintain a weekly newsletter. The answer is yes, I can in lockdown, but maybe as things start easing, it becomes twice a month or something. But for now it's still weekly and we changed the format up a bit. And so you get an insight into different project developments and behind the scenes. And then also I do a sexuality spotlight where I share some information or a resource or something that you should be following and checking out. And then I share current favorites and share some of your coloring ins of sexy scribbles that you've tagged me in as well. So there's like lots of different components to it now and I, I'm really enjoying writing the newsletter. It feels like blogging, which I've never been able to be consistent at, but in my little introduction to the newsletters, it feels like a weekly blog as well. My next goal was to get 500 members on my Patreon and at the time it was just under 400 and we have surpassed that. I ran a special offer at the beginning of the year for a common room pin and by the way they are coming with lockdown and everything. It's just been delayed and delayed and delayed and then I've just had lots of issues with quality control with them but I promise you that the ones that will be sent out are going to be of good quality. So I'm just like making sure that they are all great and then I will be getting them sent out ASAP. By the time this video goes out, they might already have been sent out. We will see, but I have boxes of boxes of envelopes in my corridor right now. So I promise they're coming and I'm really sorry that they're late. Um, but because we ran that special offer, um, I now have over 600 members on my Patreon and I'm so, so grateful for my Patreon. It is really just something that like helps me with stability and motivation and just love the community that we have over there. The next goal was increase assistant hours, maybe full time question mark. Because of lockdown, there isn't like enough to be doing full time, but the hours have increased. And actually just before lockdown, got a new assistant, but she is now working for me like 21 hours a week. So that's like a bit more than it was previously and yeah, I'm just really pleased with how that is going and shout out to Megan. Next was complete my business accelerator slash get the Hormone Diaries website up and running. So I started doing this business accelerator this year called We in Social Tech, which is for women who run businesses in technology uh, that have a social purpose. And so my focus for this program was to figure out the Hormone Diaries as a community, as a, a viable business maybe. So the Hormone Diaries website launched on the 13th of June, which is the one year anniversary of when the book came out. And we've had so many submissions of your stories about periods and contraception on there. And I've been going through them and publishing them. And yeah, it's, it's an amazing resource if I say so myself. We have different categories on there. So if you're looking for specific stories, you want to read about other people's experiences, with the pill or with mental health or with PCOS or endometriosis or whatever it is, there are lots of different categories. And so you can click on them and read specific stories about those areas. By the time this video comes out, technically the program will be done. It was only six months. And in lockdown, we've been doing a lot of the sessions over Zoom <laughs> as everyone else has been. So I don't really know what's next, to be honest. I feel like I've learned a lot from it about business and some of it is relevant to me and some of it I'm just like wow this is way too granular and I I can't understand this and I don't want to so it's, it is a bit like cherry picking what I think is going to be useful for me or like what I'm interested in as well and probably the best thing about doing this program was meeting the other women in the cohort because it's just a great network of people to ask questions to and like share information and advice with and yeah it's been good next was build a linkedin habit 
yeah, no, that's not really happened. It's so hard to build habits. <sighs> like all it involves is like checking LinkedIn and like putting posts on there about like career updates and stuff, but damn it, <laughs> it's not happening. 10, <laughs> um, get some more relationships and sex education training, safeguarding training, and maybe like doing in-person workshops by the end of the year. This is just on hold. <laughs> but what I am still invested in is my training and my learning as an online sex educator. So I'm doing a lot of online learning and I'm looking into certification, but I still don't know if it's right for me. And also there's like no certification programs in the UK, it's all US and I'm researching about it all. So that's where I'm at with that goal. So like I said at the beginning, it's really important to adapt our goals to fit with our current situation. And I want to be able to continue my learning in this field, but there are so many different ways to do that. And one way which I would recommend is this app called Blinkist, who are kindly sponsoring this video. It works on your phone, tablet, or browser, and Blinkist gives you the best key takeaways and must know information from over 3,000 non-fiction bestsellers in over 27 categories, including, you guessed it, sex and relationships. Blinkist condenses them into what they call blinks, which you can either read or listen to in just 15 minutes. As well as access to the full Blinkist library, members now also get exclusive original content from authors and creative thinkers and full length audiobooks at a discounted price. Over 14 million people use Blinkist to deepen their knowledge and learn more about different topics such as creativity, business, history, science, and personal development. I personally really like Blinkist because it gives me the main points of a book and helps me prioritize what I want to read next and what I want to make room for on my bookshelf. Also, if there's a book that I read ages ago, I like to use Blinkist as a refresher on the topic and the main points, and it really helps me remember what I learned. Two books that I recently listened to on Blinkist that I would recommend are Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by Yuval Noah Harari. This is such a big and fascinating book, and it was really useful for me to listen to the blinks and revisit a lot of the main points from it. And then also I listened to Mating in Captivity by Esther Perel. I have been wanting to read this book for so long. It has been on my TBR for so, so long. And when I saw it on Blinkist, I was like, yes, oh my goodness, I can get all of the ideas from it. So now that I've listened to the key takeaways from the book, I'm really excited to dive into the whole thing. And they also have Esther Perel's other book on there, which is called The State of Affairs. So gonna be diving into that one too. Right now, Blinkist have a special offer for you guys. Go to blinkist.com forward slash more Hannah to start a seven day free trial and 25% off a Blinkist premium membership and up to 65% off audiobooks, which are then yours to keep forever. That's Blinkist, spelled B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T, Blinkist.com forward slash Morehanna to get 25% off premium membership and start your seven day free trial. So I hope that you enjoy Blinkist and thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video. And my final goal for this year was to take time off for my wedding slash honeymoon. Now, the way things currently stand, it is fairly likely that we'll still be able to get married, but we're just not gonna have the massive party that we originally planned and the honeymoon is still TBC. But I still want to take that time off. So even if we can't like go abroad on the honeymoon that we have originally planned, I would still like to take some time off and a bit of a staycation would be nice. Okay. We're moving on to the resolutions now. How are we doing for the resolutions? So I would say for the goals, I think we're, I'm doing, I'm doing well. Like well done, well done me. Like there's a few things that we can like refocus on or scrap entirely for the rest of the year. But overall, maybe I set my goals too low. I don't know. 2020 resolutions, read 40 books. I'm actually on track for this. I've currently read 20. I went through a really like fast reading spell near the beginning of lockdown, especially when I did the reading rush and it's kind of slowed down since, um, but I'm still reading. I wanna hit that 40 books. I've never been able to hit my target for the year, so maybe this will be the year. It only took lockdown for it to happen. My second was use my local library more and <laughs> Well, the libraries are closed. However, I was using my library at the beginning of the year before lockdown happened. And I also took a whole bunch of books out of the library 
beforehand too. And I've read a handful of those, like a few of those, um, but I still have like a lot more that I got out of the library as well that are, that are sitting here. But the libraries are reopening or have reopened. And so maybe I'll use it more, I don't know, probably return the books that I've been keeping here for months. But yeah, using my local library more is still a very important resolution to me. Do regular Kegel exercises. Hmm. So I was really good at this at the beginning of the year. And then as with most habits, but it's important. So it's, it's just kind of one of those ones that like, when I remember, I like do it, but I don't have a habit for it at the moment. Number four was do Zumba three plus times a week. My gym's closed. All the gyms are closed. So that didn't happen, but I've been doing my own form of exercising during lockdown. So that's, that's just a resolution that we just have to be like, eh, out of my control. Same with this next one, do park run more. They also had to cancel all of the park runs, but I have been running more. So I got an app and I've been like, seeing how fast I've been going and like trying to improve my pace. So the app has actually helped me hold myself a bit more accountable to running. Number six, eat less meat. Oh, lockdown just, I just resorted back to similar meat eating habits before. Although not really because I'm not eating out. So my, my main thing was just like eating out. I didn't like any vegetarian options. Just not my thing. I'm a very fussy eater. So this is my main problem. So I don't have the issue of eating out anymore. And the main resolution was about making the meals that we cook at home a bit more diverse. But there was something about lockdown that just like made me resort back to comfort and like what I know and familiarity. And that doesn't mean like we're not doing vegetarian meals at all. Like we are, but we're just not doing as many as I would have liked to according to my resolution at the beginning of this year. My stupid brain and taste palette is just like, what is a vegetarian meal? Does not compute. But I still love paneer, paneer curries all the way. That's like the vegetarian meal that I will live off. <laughs> Number seven was get married. Wow, imagine, we will see. I mean, it's very likely that we will be able to actually get married this year, but like nothing is for certain. Like I'm I'm not like making any promises to myself. Eight, oh my God, I wrote read the news. <sighs> How do I feel about this one now? What I meant by this resolution was like actually reading the news and not getting my news from like Twitter and Instagram as much and paying attention to like what's going on in the world. But with everything, it's it, it makes you want to kind of like crawl into a hole even more and avoid a lot of the news. At the beginning of lockdown, I was like regularly watching the six o'clock news and then it was doing horrible things to my mental health and had to stop. This is still something that is important to me, but it's just about finding the way to do that that is kind to myself. Number nine was buy more sustainable clothing. And at the beginning of the year, pre my Disney World trip, where I was doing all of my Disney bounding, I was purchasing all of my items for that from charity shops and Depop. But then since lockdown, I have not bought any clothes, basically. So for the most part, like no clothes is like the most sustainable <laughs> option. Um, but yeah, this is something that is still important to me. I'm not perfect at it. We're making strides. We're making strides. Ha! Oh my god. I feel like this video has been pretty positive in terms of like being able to stick to most of these things or having good reason why I haven't. Um, but this final one, just this is the complete failure one. And we're just going to end on a failure for this video. And that was play my flute. And I remember in the video saying, even if I just play it once, I will count this as a win. Just, just once. Just once would be great. Um, we're in July and I haven't played my flute once. I have not picked it up. You would think that in lockdown, it would be a thing that I would do. Everyone's like picking up old hobbies, but it kind of proves to me that if even in lockdown, I don't pick up my flute, it's not that important to me. And sometimes we just have to be honest with ourselves and let go of the person that we want to be and say hi and give a hug to the person that you are. And I am not a flutist, a flautist. I'm not that anymore. I was when I was like 12. So there you have it. Those are my goals and my resolutions from the beginning of the year and 
how I'm doing with them so far. I would love to know in the comments if you set any goals or resolutions at the beginning of the year and how you're doing with them. But let's just say, no judgment, no shame, this year has been a year. Like no one could have predicted this. So be kind to yourself if you haven't hit any of your goals. Like who cares? It's fine. Hugs all round, consensual hugs all round. However you are doing, whatever you have achieved, not achieved, it's all fine. And we should not be beating ourselves up about it. Thank you for watching. I hope that you are all doing well. If you like this video, please give it a little thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.